Let's start with this problem. What is the arithmetic mean of 12 and 48? And also, what is the geometric mean between those two numbers? Now, before we talk about how to get the answer, let me give an example so you can understand what these two things are. So let's say if we have an arithmetic sequence with a common difference of 4. The first term will be 4, the second term is 8, and then 12, 16, and 20. So all you need to do is add 4 to get the next number. Now, the arithmetic mean of 4 and 20 is going to be the number in the middle, and that is 12. So to calculate the arithmetic mean, you simply need to add the two numbers and divide by 2. So 4 plus 20 divided by 2 is 24 over 2, which is 12. And so that gives us the middle number. Now let's say if we want to calculate the arithmetic mean of 8 and 16. And that should give us 12 as well. So it's 8 plus 16 divided by 2. 8 plus 16 is also 24. And 24 divided by 2 will give us the same result. So the arithmetic mean of a sequence is basically the middle number of two numbers in an arithmetic sequence. So that's the arithmetic mean. Now what about a geometric mean? Well first, let's write out a geometric sequence. Let's start with 4 and let's multiply the numbers by 2. 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16, 16 times 2 is 32, and 32 times 2 is 64. So that's a geometric series. So if we wish to calculate the geometric mean of 4 and 64, we should get the middle number 16. So here's the formula to calculate it. It's the square root of a times b. So it's the square root of 4 times 64. And 4 times 64 is 256. And the square root of 256 is 16. Now, if we wish to calculate the geometric mean of 8 and 32, that's going to give us the middle number of a geometric sequence. And so the square root of 8 times 32 will give us the same answer. 8 times 32 is 256. And the square root of 256 will once again be 16. And so hopefully this gives you a good idea of a geometric mean versus an arithmetic mean. So remember, the arithmetic mean is simply the middle number in an arithmetic sequence. The geometric mean is simply the middle number in a geometric sequence. So now let's get the answer to the question. So the arithmetic mean of 12 and 48, that's going to be 12 plus 48 divided by 2. 12 plus 48 is 60. 60 divided by 2 is 30. So that's the arithmetic mean. The geometric mean is going to be the square root of AB. Now here it's A plus B divided by 2. Here it's A times B raised to the 1 half. Notice the similarities. So to finish the second problem, it's going to be the square root of 12 times 48. So 12 times 48 is 576. And the square root of 576 is 24. So the geometric mean of 12 and 48 is 24. Now let's make sense of this. So for the arithmetic mean, we have 12, 30, and 48. Notice that the difference between 12 and 30 is 18. And the difference between 30 and 48 is 18. So the common difference between the numbers is 18. So it's an arithmetic sequence. Now, with the geometric mean, we have 12, 24, and 48. Now, this is a geometric sequence because to go from the first number to the second number, you've got to multiply by 2. And to go from the second to the third, you need to multiply by 2. So there's a common ratio as opposed to a common difference. Now, going back to that last problem, for the geometric mean, it turns out that there's two possible answers. So we said the square root of 12 times 48 is 24. And this could be plus or minus 24. So let's say if it's positive 24, then the common ratio is positive 2. 12 times 2 is 24. 24 times 2 is 48. But now, it could be negative 24 as well. The common ratio would simply be negative 2. 
So 12 times negative 2 is negative 24. And if we multiply negative 24 by negative 2, this will give us positive 48. So when calculating the geometric mean, also known as the mean proportion or sometimes the mean proportional, it can be positive or negative. Both answers are acceptable. Number two, what is the mean proportional of 10 and 90? The simplest way to get the answer is to do this. It's the square root of 10 times 90. So 10 times 90 is 900. And the square root of 900, well, you can view this as 9 times 100. The square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 100 is 10. So the mean proportional, or the geometric mean, of 10 and 90 is 30. But let's not forget it's plus or minus 30. The common ratio can be 3 or negative 3. 10 times 3 is 30. 30 times 3 is 90. 10 times negative 3 is negative 30. But negative 3 times negative 30 is still positive 90. So it can be plus or minus. Now you can also get the answer using this formula. A over B is equal to C over D. And these two are the extremes. And these two are the means. Now, in a mean proportional, these two are the same. So what you really have is A over X is equal to X over D. So if you cross multiply, X is the means, by the way. X squared is equal to A times D, where A and D are the two extremes. So if you take the square root, you get this formula. The geometric mean is the square root of A times D. So it's the square root of the two extremes. The first extreme is 10. The second extreme is 90. And so this gives us plus or minus 30. So I'm going to use the positive answer for an example. So we have 10, 30, and 90. So these two numbers are the extremes. Notice that they're at the ends. The middle number is the mean. So typically, the mean is in between the extremes. So just keep that in mind. Now, let's work on a problem that deals with ratios. The ratio of boys to girls in a classroom is 4 to 5. If there are 80 boys, how many girls are there in this classroom? So the ratio of boys to girls, we can write it as a fraction, is 4 to 5. Now, the number of boys in the classroom is 80. So how many girls are there, which is represented by the letter G? So we need to cross multiply. So we can say that 4G is equal to 80 times 5. And 80 times 5 is 400. So if we divide both sides by 4, we can see that there's 100 girls in the classroom. And the total number of students in the classroom is 80 boys plus 100 girls, or 180 students in the classroom. But this is the answer we're looking for. Here's another problem. If 4 times 5x plus 8 is equal to 16 times 3y plus 2, what is the ratio of x to y? The ratio of x to y is the same as x divided by y. So we've got to find out what this is equivalent to. So first, let's distribute 4 times 5x is 20x. And 4 times 8, that's equal to positive 32. Now over here we have 16 times 3y, which is 48y. And then 16 times 2, that's 32. So let's subtract both sides by 32. So both of these will cancel. And so we can see that we have 20x is equal to 48y. So we need to divide both sides by 20y. If we do that, on the left side, the 20s will cancel. On the right side, the y's will cancel. So we can see that x divided by y is 48 over 20. Now we can reduce these numbers. So for instance, 48 is 4 times 12, and 20 
is 4 times 5. So we could cancel a 4. And so the ratio of x to y is 12 to 5. So this is the answer. Number 5. Two squares have a side length of 6 and 9 respectively. What is the ratio of the area of the large square to the small square? So let's say this is the small square and this is going to be the large square. So the small square have a side length of 6. The large square has a side length of 9. And the area is length times width or s squared for a square. 6 times 6 is 36. 9 times 9 is 81. So we want to find the area, the ratio of the area of the large square to the small square. So it's going to be L over S, large to small. The area of the large square is 81. The area of the small square is 36. Now let's reduce it. So 81 is 9 times 9. 36 is 9 times 4. So we could cancel a 9. So for the first answer, for part A, the ratio of the large square to the small square, the ratio of the areas of those two squares, is 9 to 4. Now let's move on to part B. We want to calculate the ratio of the perimeter of the small square to the large square. So this time S over L as opposed to L over S. So to calculate the perimeter is simply the sum of the four sides. So 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6 added four times is the same as 6 times 4. So the perimeter is 24 for the first square. For the large square, it's going to be 9 times 4, which is 36. So the perimeter of the small square is 24. For the large square, it's 36. 36 is, we could say, 6 times 6. And 24 is 6 times 4. So we could cancel a 6. Now we could still reduce 4 over 6. 4 is 2 times 2. 6 is 3 times 2. So we could cancel a 2. So the ratio of the perimeter of the small square to the large square, for answer, uh, answer choice B, it's 2 over 3. And so that's it for part B. Number 6. The geometric mean between 15 and a number is 60. What is the number? So let's do it two ways. So we have 15 and some unknown number, and the geometric mean is between them, which is 60. So what is the common ratio? 15 times what number is 60? So if you take 60 and divide it by 15, that's going to give you 4. So to go from 15 to 60, you need to multiply by 4. And to go from 60 to the next number in the geometric sequence, you need to multiply by 4. So 60 times 4 is 240. And so this is the other number. The other way to calculate it is to use a formula. Let's say m is the geometric mean. It's the square root of a times b, where a and b are the two numbers. So the geometric mean is 60. The first number is 15. And we're looking for the other number. So the first thing we need to do is take the square of both sides. 60 squared is 3,600. And the square of a square root, those two will cancel, and so you get 15 times b. So now we need to divide both sides by 15. So the missing number is 3,600 divided by 15, and that's equal to 240. So those are the two ways in which you can get the same answer, the other number. Number 7. A scale drawing of a map shows a scale factor of 3 inches to 400 miles. If the distance between Los Angeles, California and New York City is 21 inches on the map, what is the actual distance between the two cities? So let's set up a proportion. So on the left, I'm going to put inches, on the right, miles. So the scale factor is 3 inches for every 400 miles. And on a map, the distance is 21 inches. So let's calculate the distance in miles, which we'll call x. So let's cross multiply. We have 21 times 400, which is 8,400. 
and then 3 times x. So now we need to divide both sides by 3. So 8400 divided by 3 gives us 2800. So the distance between Los Angeles, California, and New York City is 2800 miles. Now it turns out that there's another way in which we can get the same answer, and that's by using a conversion process. So we need to convert inches to miles. So let's start with what we're given, and that is 21 inches for the distance. Now the conversion factor is that 3 inches equates to 400 miles. Now you want to set it up in such a way that the unit inches cancel. So because we have inches on the top left, we need to put it on the bottom right and put miles on top. Now the number associated with inches is 3. The number associated with miles is 400. So you can see how these units will cancel. And so 21 divided by 3 is 7. And 7 times 400 is 2800. And so that's how we can get the same answer by simply converting from one unit to another. Let's work on our last problem, number 8. The ratio of the length to the width of a rectangle is 7 to 4. If the area of the rectangle is 112, what is the perimeter of the rectangle? So let's draw a picture. So let's say this is the length and this is the width, and the area is 112. So if we can determine the dimensions of the rectangle, the length and the width, then we can easily calculate the perimeter of the rectangle. So how can we calculate the value of L and W? Because we have two missing variables, we need to write two equations to solve for it. So the first one is the area. Area is length times width. So 112 is equal to L times W. So that's the first equation that we have. Now the second equation has to do with the ratio. The ratio of the length to the width, L divided by W, is 7 to 4. So let's cross multiply. So this is going to be 7W, and that's equal to 4L. Now let's solve these two equations by substitution. So I'm going to isolate W in this equation. So I'm going to divide both sides by L. So 112 divided by L is equal to the width of the rectangle. So now we could take this value and substitute it in for W in that equation. So it's going to be 7 times 112 divided by L, and that's equal to 4L. Now to get rid of the fraction, let's multiply both sides by L. So on the left, the L values will cancel. And so it's going to be 7 times 112, which is 784. And 4L times L is 4L squared. So let's divide both sides by 4. So L squared is 784 divided by 4, which is 196. And now we can take the square root of both sides. So this will give us L. The square root of 196 is 14. So this is the length of the rectangle. So it's 14 units long. So this side is also 14. So now we can calculate the width using this equation. So the width is going to be 112 divided by the length. And so 112 divided by 14 is 8. So now we can calculate the perimeter. The perimeter is equal to 2L plus 2W. So that's 2 times 14 plus 2 times 8. Now 2 times 14 is 28, and 2 times 8 is 16. 28 plus 16 adds up to 44. And so this is the final answer.